Welcome back to Sean's Colorado Beer Tour. We're here today at the Ivy Wild School. Now, the Ivy Wild School was built in 1916 and was an elementary school until 2009. Now, in 2012, it was bought up by the Bristol Brewing Company, and we're here to visit them today. This is one of my all-time favorite breweries. When I'm not doing the show, I'm typically drinking them or New Belgium. So this is a big deal that they let us film here. So let's go check out their stuff. Ivy Wild, since being taken over by Bristol, has become something of a community business center. Several businesses share space here, including the principal's office, which is a bar, and a wonderful bakery. I only checked with Bristol to see if I could film here, so you'll just have to come check those places out for yourself. One of the things I love about this place is all of the elementary school pieces they have left in place. For example, these hands along the wall, or the alphabet murals on the inside of the bathroom walls. I'm not going to film them because that would be a very uncomfortable place to film. This is not a 90s movie, but if you're ever here, I highly recommend you go and check those out, even though it sounds weird. On top of being one of the larger breweries in Colorado, the Bristol Brewery also has amazing food. They also regularly host events such as movie screenings in the old gymnasium. Due to its tremendous size, I'm unable to show you the full extent of Ivy Wild. But if you ever get a chance, it's a very cool place to come and explore. On the days when they're not too busy, you can request samplers of every beer they have on tap. So we ordered one of everything and found a nice spot outside to sit and try them. So confession time. As much as I love Bristol, my GoPro, which I film most of our tasting footage on, clearly does not. In our first attempt filming here, the GoPro recorded no video footage whatsoever, and I had to request to come back a second time. The second time we were here, the camera and microphone did not work well together, and I captured nothing but silent footage. This was rather unfortunate, because Sam and Kim on this day had excellent commentary on the subtleties in the flavor of the beer. Thankfully, this time, learning my lesson from the first malfunction, I quickly wrote down all of the commentary we could remember from the tasting. The first beer we tried was Bristol's Scotch Ale. It has a deep, dark color that I was very excited about. The Scotch Ale was quite a pleasant surprise. We all fairly liked this one. It is an extremely smooth and has a mild, malty aftertaste. Very good dark beer. The next up was the Automation White IPA. This was a big surprise. Its color is deceptive. At a glance, this beer appears as though it will be fairly light, but trust me, it's a proper IPA, and a strong one at that. Sam and Kim were not fans. It was even a little strong for me. Underneath the strong hop flavor, there were notes of citrus that were very pleasant. I think this may have been the first white IPA I have encountered up to this point, and I'm a fan. Third in our lineup was the Rye PA. Bristol's Rye PA is amazing. I was the only one at this table that liked it, but a few of our regular group are big fans of this one. We went through quite a bit of this last summer at Blues Under the Bridge. It has a fairly strong hoppy taste with a bit of a malty aftertaste. The rye and the IPA flavor go together brilliantly. Overall, this is definitely one of my favorites. One of two of the Bristol Tesla-inspired beers they had on tap this day was the World Peace Death Ray IPA. This is perhaps the smoothest IPA I have ever tasted. It didn't have overpowering amounts of hops, which allowed for a lot of the other flavors to come through more clearly. I recently found this beer at my local liquor store, and I'm super excited about it. Here I thought this beer was seasonal. Turns out, it's available year-round, and in bottles. The other Tesla-inspired beer is the Knob Hill Station Rye PA. The rye in the mix gives it a sharper bite than the World Peace Death Ray, though it also does not have an overpowering hop flavor, much like the Death Ray. I have had these two beers back to back on several occasions now, and I just can't decide which I like better. I thought these beers were seasonal, but it turns out I was wrong. I can now debate which of these two beers I like more all year round. 
Considering how much I love the rye PA, though, it might end up going to the Knob Hill. But the jury is still in deliberation. So it's a bit of a tangent, but Bristol's obsession with Tesla does not end there. I just found on their website another beer called the Wireless Warlock, and this one is seasonal. Seems I'll be visiting Bristol here again very soon. Next up was the Cezanne. I wish I'd picked up a copy of Bristol's beer menu, as the Cezanne was not on it. But I think that's what this one was. I'm not a big fan of these types of beers. I tend to find them somewhat sour, and as of yet have not acquired a taste for them. So given my bias and lack of certainty as to which beer this was, I think I'll leave this here. From there, we went on to try the Red Baron Oktoberfest. I have to say, being a fan of old Warplanes, this beer has a super cool label. Kim was a really big fan of this one, but all of us liked it. Though its color was quite dark, its flavor was much lighter, and it had slightly nutty hints. Overall, we were all quite fond of this one. The Beehive is the first of Bristol's flagships we tried this day. It has a very light flavor with subtle hints of honey. Sam picked up on the honey notes more than the rest of us. Perhaps we should have tried this when it was a bit cooler, as I seem to remember the flavors being stronger when this one is colder. It tends to have a light color and is slightly hazy due to the honey in it. But it's a very refreshing beer, regardless of temperature. The next up was Bristol's Kolsch. Kolsch is a traditional German style of beer. It's usually very light and oftentimes fizzy. I seem to remember this one being fizzy, but it had a really good flavor as well. It's almost like a Budweiser, but it has a lot more flavor. The next beer we tried was the Mass Transit, another of Bristol's flagships. Mass Transit has what in my opinion is the best beer label ever. Its logo is the old VW bus that I filmed in the walkthrough. And to me it has a definite lager flavor, like maybe a strong pilsner. It sticks with the malty undertones the rest of the beers have, and it's fairly light in flavor, but is more pronounced than something like the Beehive. Like all of Bristol's flagships, it's just a really great beer. Next on our platter was the Red Rocket. Red Rocket is one of my favorite beers that Bristol makes. Or should I say another one of my favorite beers that Bristol makes. It has a nice red amber color and a light hoppy flavor. It is listed as a pale ale after all. It's a fairly fizzy beer, kind of like a summer beer, but with a better kick to the flavor. Like most of Bristol's beers, it has a very nice malty feel to it and a pleasant taste that sticks with you a while. To me, this one has the perfect level of hops. I'm a really big fan of this beer. Finally, we come to the Laughing Lab. Laughing Lab is, to me, Bristol's true flagship beer. You can get this beer in almost any liquor store in the Springs, and in fact, in most liquor stores in Colorado. It's a flagship for good reason. You can't go wrong with it. It's fairly dark in color and has a wonderful flavor that isn't overpowering. For me, it comes out as almost a caramel flavor with slight nutty hints. This is definitely a favorite of mine and not just from Bristol. This is one of my favorite beers from anyone. While I was not a fan of IPAs when we started this tour, they've really grown on me. For me, Compass is the yardstick for which all IPAs are rated. It's certainly not one you're going to get a new person to like IPAs with, though, because it's a very strong hoppy taste. But it's so good. The first time we tried filming here, they also had Compass on Nitro. And if you get the chance, you've got to try Nitro Compass. It was so good, even better than the standard Compass IPA. I'm definitely a fan of every rendition of this one. And our last beer of this trip is the Yellow Kite. Now, the second attempt at filming here, they were out of the Yellow Kite. However, since we were here twice, I can comment on this one as well. Yellow Kite is Bristol's summer pilsner. I'm not usually a fan of pilsners, but this one is quite good. It has a nice, like, citrusy bite to it that makes it, to me, very pleasant, especially when really cold. Before we go... I'd like to say a huge thank you to everyone at Bristol Brewing for allowing us to film here not once, but twice. We had a great time here, 
on both occasions. And in fact, every time I'm here, Bristol is just an amazing place to come and visit. So if you're ever in Colorado Springs and looking for something to do any night of the week, I highly recommend coming and checking out Bristol.